Okay, so we ended the previous lesson by rendering five employee cards. And right now, all of our card logic is directly in line in our render method. So we simply copied and pasted these cards and modified their internal content. What I want to do in this lesson is create a new property on our component state called employees. And employees is going to be an array of objects. Each object is going to represent one employee. Then in our render method, we're going to iterate over that array using the map method and generate a card for each employee. And this is generally the design that you're going to follow whenever you're going to be receiving some bit of data from a backend to then render to the component. Right now, we do not have a backend. We simply have all of our data hard-coded within our component. But the direction that we're going to move in in this lesson is going to set us up to eventually have a component where we can receive data from a backend, populate our component state, and then trigger a re-render to display that received data in our component. Remember, whenever you're going to be making a request for data, your component is going to start off without any of that data. So you have to be able to accommodate both scenarios, both having no data and then receiving that data and rendering something for it. And the approach we're gonna follow here is going to enable that. So with all that said, let's scroll up in this file and go to our state declaration at the very top and I'm gonna add a new employees array right here. And in my employees array, I'm going to have, as I mentioned, a bunch of objects and each object is going to represent one employee record. And I'm just gonna copy the exact information we have on the right-hand side. The one thing I'm going to add to each employee, however, is going to be an ID property, which is just going to be an arbitrary numeric identifier for a record, much like a database would save for a record on the backend. So right here, I'll begin with my first object and I will give it an ID of one. All right, and then for this first employee, the name will be Michael Scott, just like we have down there. I'm also going to add a property for initials and this will be MS. And then for description, which is going to be their title, I'll say regional manager. So that is a sample object. And what I'll do is just copy and paste this object a couple times below and then modify the corresponding data. So for our second employee, they'll have an ID of two. That employee will be Dwight Schrute. Their initials are going to be DS, and then they are the assistant to the regional manager. For employee number three, they're going to have an ID of three. The name is Jim Halpert. The initials are going to be JH, and the title is salesman. For employee number four, the ID is four, the name is Pam Beasley, the initials are PB, and the description or title is front desk secretary. And finally, for our fifth employee right here, that is going to be Stanley Hudson with initials of SH and a description of salesman. So now we have a representation of our employee data in our state. And as I mentioned later on, we're going to receive this data from a backend. That's in the next section. But for now, we can imagine that we have made a request to a backend server. We've received this data and now it is stored in state. And so now we can iterate over this data and render a card for each one. We did something very similar in the taco card project where we had an array of tacos and we used the map method to generate an array of JSX from an original array of data. We're gonna do the exact same approach down below. So in the render method, scrolling down, here is where we begin rendering all of our cards. So what I'm going to do here is begin with my J JSX interpolation syntax because I want to do a little bit of JavaScript inside here. And here, I'm gonna need access to my employee's piece of state. So at the very top of the render method, I'm gonna make sure I destructure employees. So now that array of objects is available to be used in my JSX. And right here, I'm gonna reference that employees array and I'm gonna call the map method on it to generate a new array. So right here, we're starting with an array of objects and we're gonna end up with an array of cards. So when we map, we provide a callback function. And then here we can return whatever JSX we want and we're gonna get an array of the same size as our original array. So I'm iterating over a single employee on each iteration, 
And the JSX that I want to return for each one is going to be a sample card. So I'm gonna copy and paste this content into here, save that, and now you can see we're getting the same generic card, uh, the same repetitive card of Michael Scott, and that's because we are still hard coding the data right here. So with that said, I can delete all of these cards below, these manually hard coded cards right here. There we go. So now we're down to five cards, one for each of our original array elements, but obviously we still have our original hard coded data. So all that's left to do is to replace the references in here with the corresponding properties from our employee object, all right? So the first thing I want to do is on the card right here, I'm going to add a key prop and I'm going to set that equal to employee.id. Remember, whenever you are using the map method in React to iterate over an array, for your topmost returned element, in this case, the card component, you need to add a key prop with a unique identifier. It doesn't matter what that identifier is, as long as each card has a different one. And this is critical for React's algorithm to figure out and distinguish the cards from one another. So whenever you are using map, you should always be adding a key prop to your top uh, component or element and giving it a unique identifier. All right, so moving on, here we have our avatar with the hard-coded value MS. I'm gonna replace this with a interpolated value of the initials, and on every single object, we have that initials property. So right here, for any given employee object, I'm gonna get its initials property, save that, and now our initials are correct. For the title, I'm going to get the employee name, so right here, instead of my string of Michael Scott, I'm gonna provide curly braces and on my employee object that I'm iterating over, I have a name property, save that. And now we have the name property from each object reflected right here as well. And then finally for the position right here, I'm gonna replace regional manager with my curly braces. And once again, on my employee object, I have a property that I want and that is description and that is going to give us the description from the object that we declared above. So now we have the exact same result as at the end of the previous lesson. We have five cards for five employees, but we've set up our code to be a lot more dynamic because when we re-render, we'll be able to react to whatever the employees array is. Whether employees is an array of zero elements or five elements or 10 elements, 15, it doesn't matter. This code will still work because employees is going to be uh, an array and thus it's going to have a map method. If there are no elements in that array and we call the map method, we're just gonna end up with an empty array and we're not gonna render anything. If there is an employees array with one employee, then we're gonna render one card. If there is an employees array with 10 objects, then we're gonna end up with 10 cards, right? So our view is dynamically reacting to the data, which means we have sort of decoupled the view directly from the data compared to the implementation we had in the previous lesson where we were hard coding all of these values in line, there was not so much flexibility in that approach. Now we have connected the render here to a separate slice of data called employees that lives in part of our component state. And thus, as that array changes, the component will automatically re-render itself. And we don't have to worry about that section anymore. All we have to worry about is correctly modifying the employees array. So we'll figure out more about how this plays a role when we implement a backend uh, in the next section of the course. But now to close this section off in the next lesson, we're finally going to implement the filter feature and we're going to enable the user to type something into the input here and filter the available employees that pop up that match the user's search term. So it's all gonna come together in the very next lesson and I will see you there.